Hey everyone, how's it going? Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. So the last time we left off, we made some cool health bars that worked pretty easy. That was a solid episode, I think, pretty straightforward and just kind of got it working in the game. Not too much issue. And what we're going to do this time, I'm pretty jazzed about these health bars, is we're going to add some other quick additions to our game. I'm thinking this time we'll get the base for our currency and our lives. So these are both variables in our player class, at least that's how I imagine it right now. I am kind of, as you can see when we play the game, I'm kind of stalling with these projectiles because as you can see both of our towers use the same ice ball projectile and it's because I've been thinking the past couple weeks like the best way to really have each tower have a custom projectile, at least in the way we currently have it set it up, uh, or in the way we currently have it set up, it's kind of complicated for how we're going to do this. Or it doesn't necessarily need to be, but I'm just trying to figure out the best way to do it. So that's why we haven't really separated the projectiles per tower yet, is I'm still not sure exactly how I want to get that in the game. If you guys have suggestions, feel free to go in the comments. There are a couple ways I was thinking of, but none that really just seem perfect to me. Uh, hopefully by next week we'll figure out a good way to do that. But this time we're going to do something really quick here and really fun. Maybe that's the wrong order. Really fun and also happens to be really quick. So let's go to the player class first. And at this point, I should probably mention that obviously I sound a little bit different right now, and I apologize for that. It's because I'm moving around again, so I'm in a new room, and right now I'm using actually a blue snowball. I usually use a Yeti, but I haven't had time to set up the Yeti. It's on like a little arm and stuff like that. So I just got the snowball out here, so it sounds different. If it's not as clear, I apologize for that, but hopefully it's working well enough. So in our player class, we're going to do something super simple here. We're going to make two new variables for our currency and our lives. Uh, private, we actually probably want to make this public, and I was thinking we might even make it static. So let's go to make two public static integers named cash. You can name yours gold, money, funds, copper, currency, I don't know. Any synonym for money that we're going to be spending in the game. I'm going to use cash because it's four letters and it's easy to type out as a variable name, and cash just sounds kind of cool and generic. Uh, cash and then lives. I'd recommend calling yours lives as well. I don't know what else you would call it. I capitalize the variables because they're static. You don't necessarily need to, but it helps me denote that they are not just a regular private or public variable, but they are static and will be accessed from other classes. And the reason we do this is because I was kind of experimenting around before I recorded this episode. I usually do that before each episode, just kind of plan a little bit, rough outline what we're going to do. And it seems easiest to me, and it seems like it makes sense in this instance to have cash and lives. Uh, accessible through other classes because otherwise we need to pass our player or a reference to our player down to every single tower, every single enemy. It seems like a lot less overhead or a lot less coding that needs to be done if we just make these two static. So that way our towers have access to our cache, our lives are accessed by our enemy. So every time an enemy reaches the end of the maze, we can just tell the enemy, all right, subtract a life from the player. So let's go ahead and set those up right now. In fact, I'm going to make a new public void setup and all we're going to do here is set our cash and lives for the player so cash will start with 50 I mean, why not money literally has no meaning in this game yet so 50 seems like a good place to start and for lives we'll do 10 that seems pretty generic enough and up here i'll actually just set these to zero just in case that setup doesn't get called we have a value stored for those and in our game after we make our player right here, player equals new player, we're just going to call player dot setup. And so why am I doing that, right? I could just make it 50 and 10 in here. Well, we're going to do some other stuff in the setup as well, uh, other than just cash and lives. Cash and lives is just all we have right now, but eventually we might want to tune our difficulty there. And when we do that, we actually might want to change the amount of cash we start with and lives we start with. So it just makes sense to have its own method for everything we want to set up for our player, as opposed to just doing it inside of the constructor there. So we have our setup method here, and we have 50 cash and 10 lives. So that's how you do that. Thanks for watching. No, I'm just kidding, guys. We're going to do something else with it, too. We're going to go to our hmm, enemy class. We'll go here first. And let's start actually using these new variables. Just kidding. Let's go back to our player class. I wasn't actually forgetting. I just forgot to do this. And we should make some methods to make sure that we're using these variables correctly. So for example, we'll do public static void modify cache and we'll take an amount of cache as an integer and inside here you know what actually let's make this a boolean that'll make sure we're really honest with it make sure we're really following some rules and you'll see what i mean in a second here 
because what we're going to do is we're going to say if the cash that we have plus the amount that we're modifying it by is greater than or equal to zero, then we'll go ahead and uh, change our cash by that amount. So cash plus equals amount and return true. Otherwise, we'll return false. Okay. And so the reason we're doing this is say our towers cost money, right? Our towers cost a certain amount of cash. So we have 50 cash left and our ice tower costs 55 cash. Well, when we place it, before we do, let's see right here, cannon ice, we're going to put a little if statement and we're going to say if modify cash and how much does the ice tower cost? For this example, we'll say 55. And now that's all we need to do to make sure that we can actually afford this tower. Because when we call this method, we're going to say only place this tower if we can afford it. If we can afford to lose 55 and still have at least zero money left. Not only that, but it also lowers the amount for us. So cash plus equals negative 55, we lose 55 cash. So that's why we're doing a Boolean. It's to make sure that we can actually afford the stuff we're spending. I mean, maybe you want to make a credit card simulator in your tower defense game. That'd be cool too. I'm not going to cover that in this episode. Maybe a bonus episode for patrons or something. But for now, we're doing no credit, all debit. Make sure you can afford what you're spending. Now let's go make another one for our lives now. Public static. We can make this one void. Uh, I can't imagine why we need to check if you don't have enough lives. We'll do a game over somewhere else, I believe. Probably not in the player class. But for now, we'll just make it void. Public static void modify lives. Also takes an amount. And we're just going to make lives. Uh, we'll just keep it at plus equals amount. And so the reason we're doing plus equals is just to keep it equal to cash. And it kind of we can do it both ways because this way, if we want to lose a life, we can just put negative one, and that's pretty intuitive. If we want to gain a life, say like every five rounds you get an extra life, you just put in one, and it works out that way. Lives equal that amount, uh, or add to that amount. You know what I mean. So let's go to our enemy class now and actually start using these methods in our die method. Hmm. All right, how about this one? Once we kill an enemy, so we damage it. If it loses all of its health, then it dies. Well, in addition to that, let's go ahead and put brackets around this. In addition to dying, we also want player modify cash, and we'll give them, say, five dollars. Give five dollars for killing an enemy. And let's go ahead and go back to our player. Now let's stay here. Let's do our lives now. The way we have our die set up is not perfect for this. Uh, where do we call die when it reaches the end of the maze? Populate checkpoint list, checkpoint reached. Update, here it is. It's right here. So this is where we reach the end of the maze. So maybe, I'm not sure if we wanna make a different die method for dying via damage versus the end of the maze. I'll tell you what, we are gonna do that. So let's go ahead and go make a new method here. We can actually just put it, uh, put it right here, right below the checkpoint, or right below the uh, update method. And it's gonna be private void, I'm gonna call it end reached. And it's just a different method than die. We'll make die specific to dying from damage or you know some kind of damage over a time effect, or at least something that the player caused you to do, which is not the same as reaching the end of the maze, which is where you just kind of cease to exist. So let's go ahead and change this call from die to end reached. Maybe I'm even going to say end of maze. Make it super specific so we know exactly what we're doing here. End of maze reached. And inside here, we're going to go ahead and hit the player dot modify lives negative one. So the player loses a life for that. And we actually need to die still. So we're just going to call die after that. So now the player loses a life and the enemy dies just as per use. And when we kill an enemy, we gain cash. Towers cost cash. I'm thinking what we'll do is actually, see right now we have a temporary where the left click is the cannon blue, right click is the tower ice or cannon ice. Uh, eventually we're obviously gonna have like a list of towers we're gonna select from. And I think that each tower is gonna have its own cost inside of its tower type. So we can just kind of call the cost and we set a modify the cash. But for now, we'll just make this cost some kind of arbitrary value. 
say modify cache and the cannon blue will cost hmm even though it's the same exact thing as the tower ice we'll pretend we'll say it costs 20 20 cash so let's go ahead and try this out and just see if it works and we'll know it works if we can only place two towers off the start so instead of placing infinite we should only place two let's see one two cool now we're not tracking our cache uh, on the screen yet, so we won't be able to see when we kill an enemy. We also need to fix that tracking. It's not finding the enemies till the next wave. I think it's due with our range. But at any rate, let's go ahead and uh, let's see. What's a good amount we could test this with? How about this? How about for now we just use the console to make sure everything's working correctly? And every time we modify our cache, we're going to go ahead and print out what our cache is currently at. Um, and we'll also do it right here in case we don't have enough. So once we kill an enemy, we should gain five more cash. So let's see if that works. So place two, we can't afford a third one, but when an enemy, what is that? Okay, but when an enemy dies, oh my, oh, <laughs> I was so confused to me. It's because we are not printing a new line. I was like, do we have 35,000 cash? That was crazy. All right, let's see. How about, yeah, how about this? Now let's try running it. We start with 30 cash, then 10 because we bought a tower and we should go up to 15 perfect all right so we have a rudimentary okay okay this is interesting guys so it looks like every time we're shooting that enemy that doesn't exist yet it's dying again so this tower thinks he's doing a good job right now he thinks he's killing this invisible enemy and giving us cash every single time that is a fun bug to leave off on i think and we can definitely fix that pretty easily i already have an idea of how we can fix that it's you guys want to hint it's in the enemy method the way we're handling dying and damage uh right now our enemy is only dying when we damage it long story short anyway we'll fix that next episode you guys can try to fix it on your own if you guys have any ideas for how we could get those working projectile types into our towers i've been experimenting a lot and having some different methods for how we could do that but i'm open to new ideas obviously I haven't found one i really really am jazzed about yet so if you guys have any ideas for how we could do that then feel free to leave a comment below otherwise thank you guys for watching and i'll see you next week on indie programmer